Hello everyone, Wanda's here, me keeping us company today, and you. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Patricia, I'm an artist and illustrator. If you're new to this channel, well, we do a variety of things here. Sometimes I record vlogs, sometimes I record reviews, sometimes I record art supply videos, time lapses, things like that. I try to go with the flow. And this year I'm trying to stay consistent on YouTube while I have a little bit of fun with my videos, I have a little bit of creative liberty. I'm not searching for making something popular, more like just enjoying. But I do think that this video is a little clickbaity because we are trying Japanese watercolors, yay! So, my brother just came home from Japan for just a week and he brought back this. I asked for artsy things and of course when he sent me some photos I thought hey let's try some Japanese watercolors and I have tried Japanese watercolors before I have a video and I have used repeatedly the Kuretake Kanzai Tambi watercolors but um, I've heard really good things about the Holbein watercolors I'm not really sure if this is a very good version of it or not I asked for the 24 set and he brought it back for me so we're gonna check it out I promised a friend that I will try them out with her first so what I'm gonna do is just do a few swatches so I can know which colors we have around here and I'm gonna do that with you but as well as the unboxing so let's get to work Hello again, I'm recording this on a different day. I've actually just finished recording these swatches that you're seeing right now. I'm gonna be talking through the swatching process so I can tell you a few of my observations. I have the swatches right in front of me. And first of all, I'll apologize if these are not the most pretty or aesthetically pleasing swatches that you've seen online. I'm not very much of a swatch girl and when I do them it's mostly for my own reference. I, I've tried to make them pretty a few times but most of the times it doesn't work for me. I end up being more frustrated so I try to be a little free with these swatches but they do their function which is letting me try the colors and have a color reference for future projects. Especially now that I don't work that regularly with traditional media or with watercolor wash or whatever. Whenever I grab something like this, it's really useful for me to have the swatches because it lets me, you know, remember which swatches I might have liked or which swatches look this or that way. So initial thoughts right now, right out of the bat, is that most of the colors, I think all of the colors, are pretty saturated and they look really nice. I haven't worked in watercolors for a little bit, so it's hard for me to like remember the feeling of these or those watercolors. But technically, these watercolors are higher quality. They're supposed to be professional watercolors. And most of the color watercolors that I've had have been student grade or like a medium sort of grade, like the Etcher Lab watercolors that they sent me for a review that were like a mix. They did have quite a few 
pure pigments, which I was surprised about. I think I've mostly worked with hobbyist watercolors more than professionals, so I'm not an expert in watercolors. I've worked with watercolors for a few years, but lately I've been a little bit more rusty. Also, I'm not the best expert you might consult to if you want to get information about pigments. I'm gonna mention a few things because I know some basics. Yeah, not, not an expert of any kind, so if you want proper pigment information, please search for a web page that has that information. In fact, I actually just did to check out a few things, a few thoughts that I had and make sure I was in the correct track before I talked to you guys. Yeah, colors, really nice. I feel like they're all of them pretty saturated. They all have a nice buttery texture. I don't feel like I'm the best at telling you how the watercolors feel and look, especially not just by doing swatches because I haven't painted with them properly yet. I thought about doing a little test now, but the thing is I've been very low energy these last few days and I don't even know what I could paint to test them. I've done swatches and I'll test them out another day and probably I'll do another follow-up video with a little bit more of my thoughts when painting. I can't speak for glazing or layering or mixing colors. I can't speak for that. I'm just gonna speak for the main things that you can find out when you do some swatches and that is basically yeah the saturation i'm liking what i'm seeing so far the truth is that all of my least, latest watercolors i've been pretty satisfied with how the colors look and this is the first time that i have twos by the way all of the previous times i have worked with pans the only few times that i've tried tubes have been either in school watercolor types that were pretty bad and with a friend that she has really pretty watercolors and she has let me try a few with her. I haven't tried tubes a lot for me to speak through so I'm guessing that the fact that they're more saturated also helps because they're tubes. So usually if you're wondering if you're new with watercolors and you, you stumbled ac across this video, the difference is that when it's in a pan it's harder to take off the color just with the brush so it's much easier to get a saturated a rich color out of a tube than it is of a pan. I usually always wet them quite a lot so I always manage to get the color out pretty well but this is ma the main reason why a lot of people prefer the tubes. It's like worth more because you take you get more out of less paint things like that you know uh, at the end of the day I think it's just personal preference of course I'm guessing tubes will be like the most pure way to use watercolors because you can always like squeeze them out in a ceramic plate for example the swatches that I did in my ceramic plate will stay there I, I pulled out just the tiniest amount of paint because I didn't want to waste a lot just for tiny swatches yeah there are a few tiny blobs of paint that I might reuse either in my sketchbook or just to try out a little something, maybe some mixing or something. Yeah, I, I feel like with a little, little amount of paint you can do quite a lot, which is the, the thing that people love the most about tubes. So me comparing tubes with what I've done before, which is only pans, is also a little different, but I'm gonna do my best, guys. So I've been quite surprised by most colors that they will be like just with a tiny amount of paint. It seemed like you got a lot of pigment out and it expanded pretty well. There were a few that you could see that they were lighter. The correct, the correct term is transparent, actually. So there's a level of transparency in your paints. Some paints, even if they're like... Um, a good mix or a good pigment, they will be more transparent and others will be more opaque. If I'm correct, that is, it's just natural, is a thing about the different pigments. I do have noticed uh, in my previous experience and now that usually the ones that are more opaque or at least, you know, more... I have a thing with opaque and saturated because sometimes I feel like they go hand in hand, but it, that's not exactly true, it's just my feeling. But yeah, I usually feel that if they are pure pigments, usually they tend to be more opaque. But it's not always the case. I have a few here that were a mix of several pigment, pigments, in fact, and they were quite opaque. In fact, they even look like wash a little bit. I'm going to show it to you in the camera. I don't know if with this slide you will be able to see it. But I feel like this, this Terre Verde, it's pretty opaque. I think this one too, and these were... I think both of these were mixed of three pigments at least. And there were a few more. 
I don't remember exactly which ones, but you get the feeling even with the swatch because they're so smooth, unlike the other ones. Bear with me with these swatches because on some I just plopped some water and they will do this, which I don't mind because I actually like seeing those effects and how they look in the paint. And in some I've been more careful to do them smoothly, but yeah, I feel like it's also visible in, in how it looks. This yellow too, some of these blues as well, except that these blues have some granulation. Um, that's another term that you might not, might or might not be familiar with. The opaqueness doesn't really bother me that much because if I want something to look more opaque, I usually just do a few layers, that's okay with me. Before I used to work with watercolors as if they were sort of like markers to fill out spaces and get like very plain colors, but lately I haven't been working like that so much, so I don't really mind that effect. It is sort of good because I feel like those colors that I just showed you, if you have no experience with watercolors, you will get an easier smooth transition much easier than if you grab another type of colors that are around here. They are a little bit more delicate. I mean, you might know how to do a gradient with watercolors and still it's going to be different from watercolor to watercolor and um, the brand, the professional or student grade, all of that. It can be not only up to you. If you feel like you've never get a good gradient, it also can be because of the paint. There's like a technique behind, but it can also be that. So bear that in mind too. So I've talked about the transparency a little bit. I'm gonna briefly mention the granulation part. I particularly don't mind granulation. I know there's a little bit of a different point of view here. I think that people that are more purist about watercolors uh, do like granulation. Others don't mind them and others really hate granulated pigments. In this set, I think, because I've been checking kind of carefully to be able to tell, there were like three or four granulated pigments, which is not a lot. And the granulation I feel is very faint, uh, at least what I got here. You get a little bit, but it's nothing crazy. The, the two that I remember that were certainly granulating pigments were the ivory black, and the ultramarine deep and you can actually see it i'm going to try to do some b-roll later of the the swatches so you can see it better but yeah you can actually see a little bit of that there if i'm not mistaken the cerulean blue also had a little bit of granulation and maybe one of the browns too and, and i feel like this granulation is very faint so it, it might not bother you even if you don't love it you don't know what it is it makes this grainy effect and it can make it hard for you to keep a smooth wash because of that. A lot of people like it because it adds a little bit of texture, personality to the painting. But, it, I mean, you don't control it because if that pigment has, has granulation, it just has granulation. You know, you can't do anything about that. Okay, so... After that, I'm going to talk about the pigments a little bit. I mentioned before, I'm not an expert. Don't fully trust me on this. I'm just going to tell you a little bit of the basics. And after that, just take everything with a grain of salt. What I know about pigments, if you know more, you can probably correct me in the comments if I do some, say something weird. If you don't, as I said, just consult any web page. There's a lot of information out there. That's what I do whenever I want to know a little bit more. Basically, if you have a tube, if you have um, a pan that has only one pigment, that's usually good. <laughs> um, if you have a tube or a pan that has two, three pigments, that's usually less good. It's not necessarily that it's bad, okay? So just let me say that. Instead of being a pure color, it's a mix of colors. So you might see this color here with this name, but the thing is that if this color is not made of just one pigment, then it means that this color might not really be this color. It's a mix of two colors. I think that's a pretty obvious way to describe it. If it has one pigment, it's because this color, like for example here, this one, the ultramarine deep, this just has one pigment. One pigment that makes this color and this pigment looks like this. And it just has that one color. Maybe something like this, to make this color, they have used three pigments. Maybe they even have used 
one of the pigments that is here to make this color. What's the problem with that, you might be asking? When you mix your own colors, you know what you're doing. When people pre-mix colors for you, you don't know what they do. So the problem here that usually artists have is that when they mix colors, they can make muddy mixes or do something weird, and then when you work with that color plus another one, you're, you start adding more and more and more pigments to the color, which makes your mix muddy, because you don't know what's behind that. If you're just mixing two pure pigments, you know that you're mixing this and that, and it's hard to make a muddy mix if you're using just pure pigments, because what are you going to mix? Two, three colors at most? Maybe four? Three colors from different tubes, and these three colors are made of another three colors, then you're not just mixing these three tubes, you're mixing nine colors. And that, of course, can, re can result in muddy mixes. Um, you know, you know how that can get worse and worse and worse, and that's what usually happens with student grade colors. They mix it and they mix it with gums and things because that make it cheaper and accessible too, but cheaper and worst, which can turn out in muddy colors, in muddy mixes. You also start mixing qualities of paint, as I've just talked about, opaque, transparency, you know, all of these. If you start mixing them, then you start getting like weird things happening. You know, this just basically goes to say that one pigment usually good, more than one pigment usually not that good. Depends, of course. Uh, what I've seen here is that most most of them are not made of more than three, four pigments. I've just gone over the list, uh, over the tubes, and added a little mark on every color that is a pure pigment. Then again, I'm talking in these basics because I don't even know if this pure pigment is a good pigment or not. Because then there's that. You know, you could be made of just one pigment, but maybe that pigment is not a good pigment. So I'm just gonna keep it there. You know, keep it one pigment, more than one pigment, and there. But I've counted 11 pure pigments, which is actually pretty good for a 24 set. If you're getting a 6 set of professional watercolors, I'm guessing it's easier for you to get the pure pigments of several colors and that's it. But if you're getting bigger sets, then of course you're going to get mixes because the, the, the idea is giving you a bigger range of color and some colors are just not pure pigments. I think it's pretty much impossible to get certain colors in a pure pigment, you know? 11 of these, let me count again just in case. One, two... I think usually black and white are pure pigments. In this case, they are. All of the browns are pure pigmented, which are the light red, which I, I really like this color, it was very saturated. I don't know if I'm gonna like it for actual use, I think it could be a good base for uh, skin colors. Then the burnt umber is also a pure pigment, and then the burnt sienna as well. The same with black and white, although white, you know, as a watercolor artist is usually pretty useless. Then a good thing here is that there's Three blues that are pure pigmented as well, and again, blues are usually very useful as pure pigment because of the mixes and things. The ones that are all mixes are the greens, except the vidrin hue. Yeah, I just realized that this one is a pure, a pure pigment as well. But all the other greens are mixes. Some of these are just two color mixes, which is good too. Then again, if you're mixing a pure pigment with one that is two pigments, then you're not mixing that many more pigments than there is already here. So I don't feel like that's too bad. And with this range of colors, the good thing is that you might not need to mix that much to get the colors you need, which is usually the point of bigger sets. If you have a bigger set, usually you don't have to mix so much. Then you might not have to be so worried about just having one pigment or so many. Other than that, the yellows, except the yellow ochre, are all mixes. The reds are all mixed, except this, which I think is a brown more than a red. But yeah, this is a pure pigment as well. And there are quite a lot. There are two, just two pigments. But there are a couple, two, there are like three, four colors. Like if you're hearing me right now and getting stressed, you don't need that to paint. I've been painting for years without knowing so much about pigments. If you want to learn the basics, I feel like that's only going to add to your process. It's okay. <laughs> don't don't overwhelm yourself because you're hearing me talk about all of this. 
I'm kind of gonna close here, I think, because without having layered colors and all of that, I don't think I can say that much. But yeah, overall, I'm really happy with this. I can't compare this with the price point because my brother gave this to me as a gift. So I don't know the exact price. Also, it was bought in Japan. So I'm guessing that makes it cheaper than if you buy it in the United States or if you buy it online as an imported product. I'm gonna try to find it on Amazon. Link it down below in case you want it because I know it's around. I've also seen them in AliExpress and all of those platforms, which I don't know if they're the true ones or, if, you know, replicas of the brand, because I know sometimes they do that. What I think, if I remember correctly, I think I found this set in Amazon about for about 50 euros. I think it's not a bad price for the, for the number of colors that you get. If you're not into getting that many colors, sometimes it's better for you to get a smaller set with bigger tubes that are more last you longer which is usually a good thing i actually preferred a, a little bit more variety of colors because sometimes when i'm painting i'll rather just take a few colors out of here instead of having to mix so much i don't mind mixing so i paint little lately so i'll usually just mix for a color for maybe a skin color or something like that and the rest i'll just try to do with what i have I always end up mixing a little bit. I like to have a good backup of colors because that gives me a little bit of, I don't know, flexibility, I guess. And sometimes you might just pick a couple of colors and paint with that. You know, it's just a little different for everyone, right? So that's up to you. But about the paints, I think these are really good paints. I didn't notice any difference between the paints that I have because sometimes they say that Japanese watercolors are a little bit different. I, again, I've already worked with Japanese watercolors, so I don't know if that's why I don't notice anything. But also, I haven't f fully worked on a full piece with them, so it's hard to say so far. I'm sorry if this review or showing off thing is a little all over the place, because I feel like if I don't fully try them, I can't say much. But I, I've talked about the pigments and I've talked about things that I think are important when you buy a set and you can see the colors which is also very important if you are buying a set so i think i've done a little bit of my part but then again this video was never meant to be fully like a guide it was more of me just showing you i'm excited because i got japanese body colors and i want to try them out with you and let you know my thoughts right so if you have any questions you can leave them down below um i'm hoping i was clearer about these things, I feel like I find it a little hard to explain the pigment part, even though oh, what I know is pretty basic. I hope that was clear enough for you. I'm always happy to answer any questions. You can also leave me any suggestions that you might see want to see me paint. So I'm gonna have a thought about what I could paint with this and get a feeling for watercolors again. I've been actually missing them. So yeah, I'm excited to try them out. That's all. If there's some left of the swatching process, I will leave you to that. And if not, thank you so much for watching in either case. I hope you enjoyed this little video. I'm always so excited to get and um, to get new art supplies and I haven't got some in quite a little bit. So this is exciting. Yay! Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!